This landing page is the best one I think I've ever created. It is the best performing page layout that I've tested after building over 400 plus landing pages in over 80 plus niches. And using this framework, we've consistently seen conversion lists as low as 1% to 3 to 5% and from 4 to 5% to 7 to 10% and higher. So let me walk you through every step I typically take for seven, eight, and even nine figure brands and then give you the same framework that you can use to implement this for yourself. So starting at the very top is the navigation. Super easy, low hanging fruit that you can and should be implementing instantly is having a sticky call to action button that sticks with you as you scroll throughout the page so that somebody can easily convert at any stage of the page. Another no brainer is simply having a sticky phone number that sticks with you throughout the page so that somebody can click it and immediately get in touch with the sales rep or your support team. We found that both of these work extremely well time and time again consistently in just about every single niche you can imagine from lawyers to bookkeepers to contractors to trades to surgery you name it the next area is your above the fold which is where i want you to spend 90 percent of your efforts on this is the topmost area of any landing page that is immediately visible upon landing and it is the only section that 100 percent of your users will see but 60 percent of users will never even scroll past a section statistic on average. The first thing you need is an extremely benefit-driven headline that immediately ties into the dream outcome of your end user. In five seconds or less, you need to clearly explain why should I care and give me that one hard-hitting benefit that makes me stop and truly say, take my money. For this laser eye surgery clinic, the dream outcome for people was getting better vision without having to rely on glasses and contacts long-term. So we encapsulated that into the headline and quantified it by saying get 2020 vision. At the same time, it's people's eyes that we're talking about and they only have one pair. So they want to know that they'll be safe and supported in the case that any issues arise. We highlighted the track record and 100% success rate that this brand has to let people know that they're in good hands. And we also put a 10 year support guarantee that this brand offers to give people complete peace of mind. Notice how we're trying to quantify the value as much as possible in the headlines, right? This makes a huge huge difference for your conversions. The body text then follows our proven formula by leading with the pain point and then backing up why this company is the best solution by listing out three to four unique selling points. I don't care what your niche is or how boring you think it is. This is an absolute non-negotiable. You need to be doing this. All of these are examples of headlines we've written for a wide variety of service-based companies ranging from HVAC to finance companies to coaching to consulting to course programs you name it. The next big thing you need is at least two forms of social proof above the fold. This means things like reviews, feature publications, stats, anything that's going to build trust with users immediately. For this particular page, we focused on highlighting the number of Trustpilot reviews because it's actually verifiable and builds a ton of credibility, as well as highlighting stats of some impactful numbers like the total number of successful surgeries. This can look different for every brand. For this client, it was the number of Google reviews and some certifications that they had. For this client, it was some big name logos of brands that they worked with and some stats as well. Whatever it is, you need to highlight social proof that you believe would be most impactful and relevant to your audience. So if you only have five Google reviews, well, maybe you don't want to highlight that at the top. Next, you need to reduce FUDs, which is what I call fear, uncertainty, doubts. Ideally, you should be doing this near your critical point of action, which is near your call to action button. For this page, we did it right underneath their CTA button in kind of an unorthodox manner where we're we're highlighting a review talking about someone regretting not doing the procedure sooner, which actually alleviates a lot of stress and anxiety for people that they have around surgery. For this client, it was highlighting their super fast response time in under five minutes and their 10 year warranty because firms in the trade and contractor space are notorious for having very slow response times and very poor quality work. For this client, it was highlighting the fact that people get results in less than 24 hours and they only pay once they get results reducing fear and uncertainty around lack of performance.
performance. Next, you need a super clear call to action button. Now, depending on your traffic source and the awareness of your customer, we will either put the form right at the very top or further down in the page, right? It all depends on your offer and niche. For this page, users were more solution aware because they actively searched something and clicked on a Google ad and then were taken to this page. For your form, the most powerful layout we found is one benefit-driven headline that highlights a dream outcome, three bullet points of what they can expect and giving them an incentive to fill out the form, and then one big call to action button. If your customers are problem aware, that means that they know they have a problem, but they don't necessarily know the solution. In that case, you need to lead with empathy, really dig deep into their pain point they're experiencing, and educate them before introducing your offer and asking them to take action. In this case, you could replace your form with an image that's relevant to your offer or a VSL. The next section right underneath your above the fold will depend on the awareness level of your customers and your traffic source. If it's high intent users that are solution aware, you want to lead with the social proof section. One of our most effective layouts is what I call the wall of love, where you're basically putting a bunch of reviews with a mixture of videos and text-based reviews. What makes this section super effective is we actually add a logo of where the review was left, whether it's Google or Trustpilot or another source, and it shows people that these are actually verifiable and it adds an extra layer of credibility. We also add a photo of the person leaving the review and try to put their full name wherever possible because again that's going to resonate with people and subconsciously trigger that this is a trustworthy brand and these are actual legitimate reviews. We also put a scannable headline that effectively encapsulates what the review was about at a high level so that if somebody doesn't even read the body text they can still grasp what the review was about in a quick snap shot. On mobile, all of this is laid out in the open and we're not using a carousel design because those have very low engagement rates statistically. We're basically forcing people to consume all of this social proof because subconsciously they're just going to scan by it anyways and it's just going to make them feel like this brand is actually credible. You can obviously modify this section for your brand and what case studies you have available. For example, for this client, we actually combine their video reviews with stats that they achieve for their clients. If your audience is more problem aware and your offer is more complex, then I would want to lead with what I call the pain to proof section. So to implement this, you want to first call out the problem people are experiencing very clearly and you want them to think this is exactly me. Then you want to agitate the problem, right? Really turn up the heat and describe all of the things that they've already tried and failed at. Lastly, you want to present your solution as a clear way out of the hole they're in and to solve their problem and also give them a compelling reason to act. You can see that for this page, we put this pain to proof section right after the social proof because the audience is more solution aware and because they're more solution aware, the section is also a lot shorter on the page compared to the example that I showed previously. The next critical area that you're going to have as the meat of your page is your value prop sections. This is where you talk about all of your unique selling points of your company and what makes you different, but it needs to be in the perspective of why should your end customers care. You need to focus on the benefit, not the feature. So for this client, the most important value prop was fast and easy surgery that takes less than 10 minutes. That is the feature. The benefit for the end customer is that they get a life with clear vision. The next value prop is focused on safety first care with ongoing support. This is the feature. The benefit is full peace of mind so that they can relax knowing that they're fully taken care of. You need to make every single headline communicate the benefit in the headline itself. At no point throughout this page do we have generic headlines like here's what we do or you know what makes us unique or our services depending on your niche or your offer we will typically have you know anywhere from three to four value prop sections on the lower end to eight to ten sections on the higher end after your value prop sections you want to scatter even more social proof throughout your page. So here we have even more video-based reviews and text-based reviews to try to convince people if they're still not convinced at this point of the journey. For this page, we scattered social proof throughout critical juncture points on the page, and we actually put it creatively in between value prop sections and trying to relate the review to what is being said in the value prop section. It's a unique way of building credibility by basically saying, this is not just what our company is saying, but our customers are saying, it to. For this page, we put a bunch of case studies and screenshots, basically anything that's going to build even more trust. After your social proof, we have a comparison table, which is a really effective way of not only showing what makes your company different from competitors, but also different from the status
status quo. So for this client, we're not only highlighting what makes their clinic different from other traditional providers, but we're also highlighting what makes them different from the status quo of wearing glasses or contact lens. It's in a super scannable and digestible format with X's and check marks, which you can also use if your offer is very simple. For other clients where the offer is more complex, we actually add a line of text next to the check marks and X's to give people an additional layer of contextual relevance, which we tend to find is super effective. Next is a how it works section, which basically illustrates all of the few simple steps that people need to take in order to get on board. You can see how we're clearly outlining what's going to happen from step one to step four, and we're trying to make it seem like it's very simple for people to get fast results. Right after the how it works section, we have the meet the team section, which tends to work really, really well for any service-based company. It's the old classic saying of people ultimately buy from people. So just by having a photo of the team member or the team itself on the page is super effective in resonating with people and just adding a lot more personality to the page. For other offers like our coaching clients, we typically have a founder story section, which again builds a ton of credibility and we try to write it in a way which is really personalized and speak directly to the end user, which you should also be doing. Next, we have an optional guarantee section where if you have some sort of unique offer or guarantee to reduce fear and uncertainty, you want to highlight that here. If someone has scrolled down this far, they might just need that one final nudge to get over the edge and reduce that fear and uncertainty that they have around reaching out. For many of our clients, however, they don't have this or it doesn't really make sense for the business, including ourselves, in which case you can just replace this with a social proof section like reviews or featured logos. At the bottom of the page, we have an FAQ section, which is basically answering all of the biggest objections that customers have. We typically like to pull this from sales calls or recordings with customers just to understand and try to speak in their actual language. The final section of your page is what I call the closer section, which is your last chance to get people over the edge to convert and reach out. You want to treat this section exactly like the hero section. So first, you need a super benefit-driven headline that ties into the dream outcome of the end user. This should be followed by three to five bullet points of what people can expect if they reach out and giving them an actual incentive to fill out the form. This should then be followed by social proof, reduction of FUDs, and finally, a form or call to action button to capture their information. One big thing to note is that we had multiple call to action buttons throughout every critical section of the page. And when people click on this, what it'll actually do is take them down and scroll them automatically to the form section on the same page, right? So you're not loading a brand new section, which you can actually run the risk of losing people in that journey. So having these call to action buttons allows people to convert at any stage of the page, and it makes a massive difference for conversions. Now, if you're still here, I have something special for you. I did a challenge recently, and in that challenge, I had to come up and build a landing page in just four hours. If you click right here, you can watch the video for yourself right here on YouTube and find out exactly what the process looks like to build a landing page from scratch using a very similar, if not the same formula that we're talking about in this very video right now. See you over there and good luck with your landing page.